You're watching Seahawks Today, powered by Chat Sports. Tyler Jones here with you. And it is time to look at the very first step chart for your Seattle Seahawks heading into the 2024 regular season. We will go over every single position group and give you our projection for how this roster will look when the Seahawks take the field against the Denver Broncos coming up in just over a week from right now. Stay tuned for that. Before we do, folks, I want to set a record here on the channel. So if you recall, there was a video that we did back in the uh, early days of the month of August where we reached 260 subscribers on one video, 260 new subs. And the boss has said to me, Tyler, you guys can do better than that. Can you get 300 new subscribers on the channel? I would love to get 300 new subs. Can you guys help us reach that goal and make it happen? 300 new subs for daily Seahawks coverage, live shows, watch parties for every game this season, breaking news, QDM, mail, mailbags, and more. Subscribe now to Seahawks Today for free. YouTube.com slash Seahawks TV. Let's get 300 new subs, and we'll get started with today's show. The quarterback room for the Seahawks, no surprise, Geno Smith and Sam Howe, your two QBs. Geno, of course, QB1, Sam Howe, QB2. And the way that this is going to work out with this quarterback position in 2024 is that it's not any type of competition. Geno's not losing his job. The only way we'll see Sam Howell this year is if Geno struggles or if there is an injury. And then Sam Howell, if he performs at a high level, maybe he doesn't give the job up. But this is still Geno's team entering this year uh, at the moment for now, the way things stack up. And I think Geno's going to have a very good year. The running back room, three running backs for the Seattle Seahawks. Kenneth Walker III will be your bell cow with Zach Charbonnet as your RB2. Kenny McIntosh as your RB3. George Holani, he will be on the practice squad to begin the season, but we very well could see him at some point. He impressed in the preseason, and he was very good when it came to pass protection, specifically speaking. I like all three of those running backs for Seattle, and I think you're going to see all three of those running backs. They're all three very good pass catchers. Ryan Grubb has made it known that with this Seahawks offense, they want the running backs to be able to use, be able to be used actively in the screen passing game to be pass catching backs, and all three of them can do that. That's going to be great for this Seahawks offense of what they all bring to the table. It very well might be the best running back room in the NFL. To the receiver room for the Seahawks, DK Metcalf will be on the left side, Tyler Lockett on the right, Jackson Smith and Jigba in the slot with Bobo, Young, and Chenault as your other three receivers. And a lot of Seahawks fans relieved did not see D. Eskridge on that list. When I look at the wide receiver room, I got to tell you, I think Ryan Grubb's going to get pretty creative here. We know what DK is going to do. DK is going to be a star and He's going to easily have over 1,000 yards and do all that. But I think even though JSN is technically listed as the slot wideout right now, you're going to see more of him on the outside and him and Tyler Lockett kind of trading off roles. And I think as the year goes along, JSN is clearly going to establish himself as the number two receiver. And that's not a knock on Tyler Lockett at all, but JSN's the future. And the Seahawks – are setting this thing up for JSN to be a star. They want him to step into his own. In all likelihood, this is probably going to be Tyler Lockett's last season with the Seahawks. They don't want to take a $30-plus million cap hit next year. They're going to set up everything they can for a transition process for JSN to be that guy and take that step up, and I think you're going to like what you see. How would you grade the Seahawks' step chart? We'll go over the rest of it. We've gone through a few position groups already. What do you guys think? A, B, C, D, or F? Way in the comment section and let us know what you think on our pinned comment today. The tight end room for Seattle has a few question marks. Noah Fant is back. Brady Russell is also back from last year. But you don't have Will Disley anymore. You don't have Colby Parkinson anymore. Favreau Brown comes in from New England. A.J. Barner comes in from the University of Michigan where he won a national championship. But this tight end room, I got to tell you, I like Noah, and I think that he finally has the breakout season that we've been hoping for. I think he was held back by the previous regime uh, with Shane Waldron and Pete Carroll that 
did not properly use the tight end position uh, within this offense. And that was kind of an ongoing theme for Pete Carroll with it didn't matter who the OC was uh, over the years, whether uh, whoever they had at the tight end spot. I mean, from Greg Olson to a number of guys, they were just not properly used. Uh, I think that changes here and that we see Noah, Noah have a big year Noah fan really just take a next step. He's being paid like a top 10 tight end. They're going to expect that production from him. The one concern for me is that you have three other blocking tight ends. I need to see another receiver come out of that punch. And if not, you might have to be doing some shopping to find another receiving tight end. The offensive line for the Seahawks. Abraham Lucas begins the year on the pup list. He is out at least the first four games of the year. Stepping in his place is George Fant making his return to Seattle more than capable as a starting right tackle. I think he'll fill the role just fine until Abe comes back, and hopefully Abe is back on the field sooner than later. Charles Cross has had a very good offseason. We heard the report from the uh, Monday morning quarterbacks, Albert Breer, uh, you know, several weeks ago that he thinks that Charles Cross could be an all-pro caliber left tackle this season. And then, like in Tomlinson, you're starting left guard. Connor Williams at center. I got to tell you, I love the move to bring in Connor Williams. I think that could be the difference in a win or two for Seattle, bringing in a top five center, one of the best interior linemen in the NFL. And Anthony Bradford wins the starting right guard job over Christian Haynes. That doesn't mean we won't see Christian Haynes, though. Christian Haynes had a very good camp, but Anthony Bradford looked good as well. He just didn't do enough to lose the job that he was the favorite to have. But nonetheless, this offensive line is a whole lot better than what it could have been even just a couple months ago. I'm feeling a lot better about this group than I was previously. What's your confidence level in the Seahawks O-line? Scale it for me, 1 through 10. I'm about a 7 right now. A few months ago, I would have been about a 4 or 5. What's your confidence level that way in? Let us know. To the defensive line we go, and this group, I think, is the most improved position group in this Seahawks roster for 2024. Jaron Reed will be your starting defensive tackle. Jonathan Hankins, your starting nose tackle. Leonard Williams, your starting defensive end. Mike Morris, Byron Murphy II, and Miles Adams will back them up. Now, so I know some of you right away are going to say, why would Byron Murphy not get to start? And... All indications are the Seahawks like the signing of Jonathan Hankins. He played under A.D. in Dallas, so he already knows what A.D. wants to do on the defensive line. But that doesn't mean we're not going to see Byron Murphy. We're still going to see plenty of Byron Murphy. It is going to be quite the rotation. Even Draymond Jones, who they moved to edge, they're still saying that is is going to see some time at the defensive end spot. So it's going to rotate. All these guys are going to see significant playing time. And the big difference for me that I've talked a lot about this offseason when it comes to this group is the ability to stop the run. Byron Murphy's a run stopper. Leonard Williams is a run stopper. Uh, Jaron Reed, he's got some work to do on that front. But to me, that's going to be the big improvement here. The linebacker room, the big improvement there is pass coverage. I love Bobby Wagner. He'll always have a special place in my heart, as most Seahawks fans do. Uh, And... The thing with him and Jordan Brooks was they struggled in coverage. Dotson and Baker are going to be much better coverage-wise. Baker, there's some health concerns. We'll see how he stacks up. Then you look at the edge rushers. Draymond Jones, he's got to show that he's worth the $18 million he's being paid. He's the highest paid player on this this defense. He's got to have a lot better year than he did last year. Eugene Nwosu, a little banged up right now with uh, the injury that – uh, he suffered, and he's not expected to be back in time for the opener. You should see Boye Mafe step into that role to start the season, led the team in sacks last year. Good opportunity for Derek Hall. He's had a nice preseason here. This is a good unit for Seattle there in the linebacking core. The corner room for Seattle, a lot of excitement. Trey Brown had a very good preseason Beat out Mike Jackson. He'll be your starting outside corner on the left side. Rick Wollen, after being banged up a bit last year, struggling tackling-wise, had a down sophomore season. He's expected to bounce back. 
I think he can have a Pro Bowl campaign. And then there's the star of this defense, Devin Witherspoon, who I think is going to be a contender to be Defensive Player of the Year. Devin Witherspoon is just going to unleash. And the thing with, with, with DW is that it's not just what he's doing on the football field being what Mike McDonald called the smartest player he's ever seen, but also the leader. With losing guys like Bobby and Jamal Adams and Quandre Diggs, those voices in the locker room, despite it just being his second year, Devin Witherspoon has been that vocal presence the Seahawks have been looking for on the defensive side. D. Williams is going to be more of a special teams guy. We'll talk about him later. Pritchett, the rookie from Auburn, uh, I like as well, but uh, a very solid group at the corner position for Seattle. We'll wrap up here in just a moment, but I want to know, who's going to be a breakout player for the Seahawks this season? If you had to name one, who would it be and why? Weigh in the comments section and let us know. The safety room for the Seahawks. Julian Love, he's got a new contract coming off a Pro Bowl campaign. The best season of his career, Julian Love, is going to be fantastic. Rayshon Jenkins, you bring in from Jacksonville. I think he's going to have a similar year to what Julian Love did last year. He's He does a very good job creating turnovers. Watch out for him. Kobe Bryant, we've seen the good, we've seen the bad. We've seen him struggle to stay healthy. What version are we going to get? That remains to be seen. Mike McDonald wants to play three safeties. Kobe Bryant, it's up to you. There's a big chance for you potentially to step into that role. And then Kayvon Wallace, who you brought in from Tennessee, we'll see what he brings to the table here. But the safety room, it looks good for the first couple of spots, but there's question marks when it comes to that depth there. The special teams unit, Jason Myers is making kicks again. He uh, relieved himself in that final preseason game. That was good to see. Michael Dixon, arguably the best punter in the league. Chris Stolt, the line uh, the uh, long snapper spot. Chenault will be your main kick returner. D. Williams there as well. D. Williams also on punt return coverage, and he is something else, folks. Uh, what a story for him as a UDFA to earn a roster spot and should be a difference maker there in special teams coverage. Thanks for joining us here on this edition of Seattle Seahawks today. For continuing Seahawks coverage, subscribe now for free, youtube.com slash Seahawks TV. I'm Tyler Jones. We'll see you next time here on Seahawks Today.